welcome to another episode of Makeup for the Mature Beginner. Today we're doing a second installment for eyes and we might do three. It depends on you. I'm going to hit a couple of things today that people had mentioned in the comments below. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kiki. I'm 60 years old and I'm not a mature beginner anymore, but I was because I stopped wearing makeup for a little while and when I came back to it, nothing looked the same. I did the same makeup, the same application, the same techniques, and it didn't look so good. As we get older, sometimes we don't see our changes, but if we go without makeup for a while and, and try it again, <laughs> we know something's going on. But you don't have to be a beginner to watch this series. Many people have said they got some interesting tips, good tips, good ideas, good techniques from my last video, and they said, I'm not a beginner, but I've really learned something good here. And you don't have to be mature either. However, mature skin is different than younger skin. Whether you are mature, dry, normal, quote unquote, or oily, the skin is quite different than skin in their 20s. Same thing, they can be oily, they can be dry, they can be acneic. So can mature women, but mature skin's been on this planet for a lot longer. And as such, we've been exposed to sunlight, to sun radiation for a lot longer. And we have a lot more damage. Our skin is not as plump, as strong. It doesn't have the same amount and is not producing the same amount of collagen and elastin. So it will matter for eyes because our eyes get scrapey when we get older and our hoods get deeper. Now for part one, I use this little Smashbox Trio and I did this on purpose. I bought it specifically for this video because if you're a beginner or you're coming back to makeup after not wearing it for a while, big palettes with 16 shades or eight shades even uh, can be overwhelming. I don't know what to do. I don't know what goes where. and I don't know what's best for me with three you might have to dip into something else for glitter or shimmer, but you can get a lot done with three and it's not going to break the bank and it's not going to make you crazy. So today we're going to be doing eyeshadow underneath. And someone else asked me, what do you do when you want something kind of glittery? Where do you put that when you're hooded? So those are the two things that we're going to hit today. Now, if you didn't see the first video, I will post it right here. I have nothing on my lids right now, and I need to put a little bit of something. They're completely dry, but I'm just going to go over with this cream shade and put it all over my lids so there's no skipping or weirdness. Now I did that because when you get crepey, it's really hard to blend things out because the shadow gets stuck in the lines. And I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on just to have something so it won't look weird when I put something down here. And while we're doing that, I'll just tell you why I don't do that too often. So I'm just going to pick up my Chikahoto brush and go with this mid shade and do something quite quickly. The reason I personally don't like to put anything under my eyes is because one, I have small eyes. Two, I have dark circles. And I feel that when you put dark underneath the eyes and you have dark circles, it kind of calls attention and makes the dark circles look worse. I also feel that it can close your small eyes. Now there's a lot of videos out there Let's say the opposite. If you have small eyes, you need to do that liner and it'll make your eyes look bigger. It doesn't always work. And it's always people who don't have small eyes who are telling you that. Or who are in their 20s or 30s and even 40s and they just don't have the same structure as you or the same issues as you. When I say you, in this case, I mean me. So I'm just putting a little shadow there. Now I've always liked that kind of look that really clean underneath but recently in the last you know I don't know seven eight years Bella Hadid became a bit of a thing and I remember looking at her makeup because people were talking about it all the time and I thought aha uh -huh. her eye makeup is done very similar to the way I do it which is nothing under here and I think it has also a very clean chic look to it but that might not work for your eye shape, 
For mine, it does. I have almond-shaped eyes. They tilt up, and I like a cleaner under eye. But we're going to take this to task. There, just a little bit of something so it doesn't look weird when I get under the eyes. And we're going to try three things for under the eyes. One, we're going to try shadow. Two, we're going to do mascara under the eyes. And three, we're going to put in a flush color tone underneath. These are all things that I've heard people say will make your eyes look bigger, and they can. But you don't necessarily need to do all three. For instance, I'm not wearing concealer right now, but I feel like if I just did concealer and a little bit of mascara, that mascara will give the feeling of having liner underneath my eye without the heavy darkness. So we're going to do something a little bit weird and start with mascara. I'm going to go with the MAC Giga Black because it has a pretty small wand. You don't want a big wand when you're going under the eyes. Let me just show you an example of something I have that's quite big. This is kind of big. And I have bigger. Those are great for your upper eyelashes, but for your lower eyelashes, you're probably going to run into some problems. And we're just going to take a look, without doing concealer first, to see from side to side if this eye actually looks bigger if I just put a little mascara on. Here's another tip. If you have long lashes, don't go all the way through the lash. You really just want it at the base of your lash line. I've seen people who have very long lashes just fully coat and do a couple of coats and it looks very spidery and again can call attention to your under eyes which even if you don't have darkness if you're mature there's a very good chance that you have one or all of the following. <laughs> darkness, crepiness, lines, wrinkles, puffiness. And those are things you really don't want to call attention to. Do I see a difference just doing a little bit? I think, I think I'm going to need to get into some concealer so we can really tell. So I'm going to do concealer on both sides and then we're going to take a look. This is the Givenchy and I will be doing a video on concealer but I will just say a little goes a very long way with this particular one. You don't want to put on too much. Does this do it? It does something. It does. So I think tip number one is if you just want something very, very slight under your eyes to emphasize your eyes a little bit so you can see the borders of them, their given definition, a little bit of mascara might do the trick for you. And I would prefer, for me personally, if I were to do this on a regular basis, I'd want to use a tubing mascara so I don't have to rub and rub and rub to get it off the very sensitive under eye area. Now we're going to go in with this Chikahoto pencil. I will list the products that I'm using down below, but this is Squirrel. It's incredibly soft and it's not incredibly small. I have some from Ruffer as well that I use from time to time for things that are very specific. We, we may need them today, we may not, but I recommend something very, very soft when you're going under the eyes because your under eye is more thin-skinned, it's more delicate, and we don't want something really hard under the eyes. I'm never going to go in with the darkest color ever under the eyes. I'm going to go back in with this color and I might even dip it into here and make it even lighter than what I have up here. For the purposes of showing you what's going on, I am going to just go into this shade. Now, where do you start? Do you start over here? No. <laughs> I'd love to just tell you, if you have small eyes, it's going to make them look like nothing. I'm never going to start right here. I'm always going to keep this area of my eye pretty open. Now, from time to time, I might do liner over here, but I'm going to make it incredibly thin. And I might do liner over in that area on the lower as well, but also incredibly thin. And when I do do that, it's a look. 
It's not a beginner situation. I want to keep it really simple. So for me, I'm not going to go any further than outside of my iris. Here's another tip, you guys. You can follow the eye entirely. So for me, I'm going to start where my lashes start. I'm not going to go all the way to the iris when I'm looking straight ahead. And I'm just going to dot it on. Back and forth squiggle, and I'm following my lash line 100%. And now I'm just going to go back and forth. And do something very, very soft. Now, you need to decide on your own whether you think this is one youthful as a mature beginner who we're really always thinking about, is it youthful? Does it look old fashioned? Does it make me look older? And then weigh that with, does this make my eye look bigger? So just take a moment, I'll just sit here, <laughs> you talk to yourself, leave me a comment below, phase one. Does this make my eye look bigger? I think it makes my eye look more closed. I feel that I can see the whites of my eye better on this side. So what are we gonna do about that? I'm gonna take this. I have this uh, from Charlotte Tilbury. There's also one from Surat that I really like, but I'm not sure where I put it. I haven't sharpened it in a while, which is fine, because we're going to do it right down here and see if that makes a change. Too much of this makes you look crazy. I did a dry run the other day and I put too much on this side over this side and I felt it made me look wall-eyed. It made this eye look like instead of looking straight ahead, it was looking up like this. Not a good idea. I think that's wall-eyed. So don't overdo it on this. And again, it's not appropriate for everybody. The idea is you want to get rid of any redness you have and I don't really have any redness right now. And even though I did a light, light touch, I might have gone too high. Now, ask yourself the question again. Does it look old-fashioned? Something that mature women really need to be thinking about. Does it make me look older? And is it accentuating any of the junk I have under this eye? You decide. I still feel that because I have shadow under this eye, the eye looks smaller, but I don't want to go with any more product. Now, what you may see is close up, and what I'm seeing is from over here, which is how most people are going to see you. So when you're playing around with makeup and trying to figure things out, look from two points of view. Now, I'm just going to put on some mascara, and since I have this out, I'm going to use this on my upper lashes, and it makes the lashes quite long, but it doesn't add any volume, which is why a lot of people like this for their lower lashes. Is it weird to have different mascaras for different lashes? It's up to you. I think it makes a big difference, but I don't know that I've ever actually used it on my lashes. I, I don't really love the way it looks. It looks a teeny spidery, so I'm just going to try to shape it a little bit. So there we have mascara just on this side, and now I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a different shape. I don't know that I feel it makes the eye look bigger, but it makes the eye, I think, look more open, if that makes sense. So there's a difference. This is open, and this is bigger. I feel that doing the mascara made the eye look more open, but not necessarily bigger. I'm gonna sit here for a minute, you tell me. You tell me. All right, you may have noticed, if you're observant, you may have noticed that I did work on this eye, but not on this eye. My eyes are different from side to side, just like yours, but I'm going to try a slightly different technique on this side. I don't know that we're going to see a difference so much, to be honest with you, but you will have another option for playing around at home, and that's yeah, going to require a little playing around to figure out what works best for you. I'm not going to say this is the way you need to do it, as I see so many 
makeup artists on YouTube do. You're putting your blush on wrong. Stop doing it this way. You're doing it wrong. It needs to be this way. I don't like that. I'm not here to shame anybody. And I won't watch those kinds of videos because that's kind of what they're doing. They're telling you you're wrong. I'm just going to powder my face while I'm lecturing here. And that the only person who knows the right way is them. You have to do it my way or else you're wrong. Now, if I had three eyes, thankfully I don't, I would do what I usually do for another option. So if I had a third eye right here, I mean, we all do, right? But if you could see my third eye and I could put makeup on it, uh, it would be interesting to see one, two, three different ways. But if you've been here before, you know what I, I tend to go for. I'm not going to put mascara on yet because I want to talk about a different way to put something underneath your eyes. If you have this little rim, which I don't, but some people have a little rim right here. For me, it's fairly flat. A lot of people, and actually kind of works, it's kind of a great trick where it hides that little rim right there. They put their shadow on that rim. They just let that rim get covered with color and then people don't notice it so much. So that's something that you can do that I cannot uh, show you. Another thing that you can do if you have small eyes, instead of following the lash line 100%, is go off course. In my case, if I want to look something look bigger, I'm going to start by the lash line here and then kind of pull out straight rather than curving up. This might be something that only works for people who have slightly up tilted eyes, but same thing, I'm going to look straight ahead and I'm going to start where the lashes are and just get some down. And I am right at that lash line. And by the time I'm at the outside of my iris, I'm going to go a little bit more lower than the lash line. Can you see right here? Lash line is a little bit higher. And keep on going. Now by the time I get out here, there's less product on my brush. And that's the way you want it because if you get this wrong, it's kind of hard to clean up. You have to do concealer again. So I'm not doing it completely straight, but I am not at that lash line. And I'll emphasize it a little bit so you know what I'm talking about. Just take a look at where my natural lash line is and how I pulled it away from that right after I get to the outside of the iris. Now I feel like this makes my eye look huge. <laughs> and I haven't put on mascara or anything else where this technique makes mine look smaller. Once again, we're going to go in with this. And mind you, you guys, I haven't done my lining up here. I usually do waterline. I haven't done that, which will also change things up a little bit. I'm gonna go in with a little of this, but I really don't think it's necessary. So you know what I'm going to do? Just the teeniest bit. So you see on this side, I went with a light hand, but there's a lot more on this side than there is on this side. Just the littlest bit. Something else you might want to do, but this is not beginner, you guys. So I'm not, I shouldn't be mentioning it. You can take it and pull it out like so. Oh yeah, so I just went from making this a beginner video to not a beginner video. Take a look side to side. Now for kicks, I'm going to do the upper mascara first and see what it looks like with just this little lining technique and not mascara under the eyes because mascara under the eyes can smudge and flake and nobody likes that. All right, I feel like with mascara, it looks a little more prominent, a little more obvious. And by the way, it's my impression that ballerinas do makeup kind of like this because their eyes have to look big on stage, but their liner is far away from their eyes. And this is a much more softer version. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go into the cream color, and I want to calm this down just a little bit. There you go. I absolutely feel that this makes my eye look larger. 
And just to have everything even, I'm going to go ahead with some mascara on the lower lash line. All right. I definitely feel like I need to do a little more work under this and make it much, much softer. So I think that's a little bit better. You guys let me know which side you prefer. I absolutely see a difference from side to side, and it's important to remember that your eye shape is different than mine. Your eyes might go up like mine, they might be straight, they might go down. Your eyes might be round, or they might be almond. Your eyes might be quite hooded over here and not hooded over here. You might not be hooded at all. It kind of doesn't matter when we're talking under the lash line because under the lower lash line, what's really important is what else do you have as a mature person under your eyes that you don't want to call attention to. If you actually don't have darkness and if you don't have wrinkles or if you don't have darkness and you don't have puffiness, your landscape is the opposite of mine. <laughs> so play. I think that's one of the most important things if you're a mature beginner is to play and I'm here to give you some ideas of what might work for you and things that I have not seen other people do. Someone asked me what to do when they want to do a little shimmer or something on your lids. Just for kicks, this is from Hindash, it's called Boy Tears. And let's talk about what do you do if you have hooded lids and you want a little sparkle just a little bit. One, it depends on your products. So if you're talking about a metallic, don't put it on your lid. It will just transfer up and look crazy. What you really want is something that has a bit of sparkle to it. Now this has a pigment base, but it's going to work very, very well the way I'm going to apply it. Now this, I feel that absolutely I could just put in the center and with this kind of product, while I'm definitely going to get some transfer, it's not going to bother me too much because it's a little bit flushy toned. And really, <laughs> what it's doing for me is not so much what it does on someone that's not hooded, which is brings light to the apex of the curve of your eyeball, but it gives a little opening to the eye because you see this little shine right by the lash line. In fact, Urban Decay has a glitter liner that has the same effect, but it is glitter. With this, I can do that effect. So this is going to be my liner all the way through. And look how this peeks through my lashes. Do you see that? Isn't that super pretty? That is a beautiful way to get a little bit of shine on your eyeball that's not going to transfer up here for hooded girls. And I think actually that really opened up my eye quite a bit. Another thing you can do is of course inner corner highlight. But with a product like this, I wouldn't recommend it really for the day. It's fun and everything, but it's pretty obvious. I just did the teeniest bit so it's less obvious, but for evening you could put a little bit more there. I happen to think that this particular technique is old fashioned. I think this is come and gone just like blingy highlighter you can see from another planet. Doing something blingy in the center of the eye on a daily basis is definitely, it's just not cool. It's not chic. And at evening you want to be you want it to be more burnished than sparkly, where you take a brush like this. This is a rougher 03. This one is a Hakahoto, but I cannot read it. And you put the product in there and you just burnish. Keep on going, keep on going. So it looks like a glow rather than a sparkle. But this effect right here is lovely. However, remember the kind of mascara I'm looking at. This is a lengthening mascara. It's not something that is giving me volume. If you wear false eyelashes or use very voluminous mascara or just have a ton and ton of mascara of lashes, this may not have the same effect on you that it has on me. But it's a little bit of a peekaboo kind of situation. And yeah, that really helped a lot. I'm gonna do it on the other side. All right, you guys, now 
we are done. I want to thank you so much for your comments, for your questions, to give me ideas of what else to show you. And I, I think we could do number three on eyes if you want to. Let me know some other questions that you may have, but we certainly are going to do other things. We're going to do contour and bronzer. No, contour and bronzer. And we are going to do blush, and we're going to do foundation, and we are going to do eyebrows. We're going to do it all, and this might wrap up eyes. Let me know down below if it should or not. And that's it. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I really hope this was helpful, and I hope you come back again. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Share it with someone who you think might enjoy it, who will get something out of it. And yeah, that'll help me out a lot. Until the next time, I'm wishing you good health.